Uh, here is the issue, a uh, current issue, the deindustrialization since the 1980s and the reindustrialization of the West in recent years. The deindustrialization de uh, of the West has become an important uh, academic uh, topic since 1980s uh, because some scholars in Europe uh, realized that uh, we do see a fundamental uh, change, a shift of uh, manufacturing activities from uh, West toward the uh, developing countries. And this movement they call deindustrialization. The consequences of deindustrialization from the West to the developing countries is, uh, is, the, is job cuts and uh, corporate downsizing. And uh, if you look back to the literature, uh, even the magazine and newspaper that were published there in the 19, uh, nine, since the 1990s, there's all kind of report about how some corporations cut the job in the U.S., move the jobs overseas, and that is uh, in, is a big wave of uh, corporate downsizing. And this is a part of this uh, uh, deindustrialization of the West as a result of a fundamental change in the globalization. But in recent uh, years, we be also begin to hear uh, that people are talking about the reindustrialization of the West. That is, uh, the Western countries, in response to the deindustrialization, they have adopted some kind of a, a policies try to stop this uh, trend, uh, stop this uh, trend from losing the more workers to the developing countries. More importantly, some uh, new technology has emerged that uh, make some industry of Western countries regain some of the strength. And uh, here, let's sh let me show some, a few slides here to illustrate the in uh, reindustrialization in the United States. This is a, uh, a slide that I show that I come from Federal Reserve, the Central Bank of the United States. This slide show the total number of employees of manufacturing in the United States. So we can get a sense of the, the, to the peak of manufacturing employment uh, in the U.S. occurred during sometime early 1980s. Since then, you see the steady decline. Uh, it's a, a steady decline. To the, the number of employment in manufacturing uh, in the United States. And uh, this is a slide that shows the foreign employees of U.S. or U.S. multinational corporations. So many U.S. big companies, they have overseas uh, facilities, overseas branches, overseas uh, production uh, sites. And in overseas, they would hire uh, foreign workers. And with this kind of manufacturing migrate to developing countries, to foreign countries, uh, therefore those American companies increasingly hire more foreign workers. And that is what you'll see uh, on this slide. At the same time, because they uh, uh, set up a lot of uh, production facilities overseas, therefore the number of workers they hire in the United States become less. That's what you see on this slide. And the same uh, trend occurred uh, in other developed countries. And uh, on this slide, you can see several developed countries. You see uh, Canada, Australia, Japan, France, Italy, Netherlands, Sweden, and, in, and the United Kingdom. In all these countries, you can see the employment that is represent the employment in manufacturing that is represented by the green, by, by blue color. For 1965, compared compare with uh, 2006, in terms of percentage, all declined. And that decline was replaced by uh, increase in employment in service sector. And same trend uh, occurred in all other developed countries. And it's just um, uh, different in the matter of a degree. Okay. And this slide uh, shows similar information, similar message. The total employment of manufacturing jobs uh, declined in all developed countries. This uh, general trend is very clear. However, this, uh, this slide from the Federal Reserve tells us 
but in terms of manufacturing output, the, the quantity of a product from manufacturing industry, from manufacturing sector in the United States keep rising. You know, in one early slide, we, we can see that uh, the employment of manufacturing declined. However, from this slide, we can see that the manufacturing output keep going up, except during the time of economic recession. So that have a major impact that caused decline in manufacturing. But outside of that, during economic ex expansion, we see that output of manufacturing keep rising in Western countries, in the United States. Okay. What's going on? So on the one hand, manufacturing workers are declining. On the other hand, the output of manufacturing still keep going up. What happened here is that look at this. This slide show the average hourly earnings of a production on a non-supervisory employees for manufacturing. That, is, that means that those workers who remain within the manufacturing sector in the United States, their income keep going up, keep going up. What makes them uh, can still earn high income when facing the severe competition from foreign workers? You know, the U.S. manufacturing is losing workers to the overseas. But for those who remain within the manufacturing sector, their income keep going up. So if a industry is losing its workers, uh, theoretically we would we would imagine that uh, the workers who remain in the sector will pay will be paid less. What's the reason that the workers within the manufacturing in the U.S. still get a higher and higher pay over time? We mentioned earlier on, remember, we said that the essence of the Industrial Revolution is increasing labor productivity. Those uh, workers who remain within the manufacturing sector, their pay keep going up, must be due to the fact that uh, those workers who remain in the manufacturing sector, their labor productivity keep going up. But what makes those workers have higher labor productivity? Okay. Look at that. Look at this. This slide show the capital to labor ratio in manufacturing on a non-farm, non-manufactured sector. Okay. La uh, capital to labor ratio is an uh, economic term that simply describes how the investment to machine compare with worker. If a worker has more machine to use, the capital to labor ratio will increase. So the higher capital to labor ratios means that the workers will have more machine, better machine to use. Those machine contain is more innovative technology that will become make workers become more efficient. We can see the last few decades, a general trend within manufacturing is Rising capital to labor, rising capital to labor ratio, and that is what makes the workers in manufacturing industry become increasingly productive. Even if they are losing actual people, but uh, they are adding more machines, they're adding better technologies that make the remaining workers become more productive. That make remaining worker in manufacturing uh, earning higher income. And this is another slide that show very similar picture. This is the manufacturing productivity compared with the labor productivity in all sectors in the U.S. economy. So that gives you a sense that in manufacturing sector, they have a higher labor productivity compared with all industries as a whole. And that really uh, explained why uh, when the U.S. is losing with manufacturing employment, but for those who are still working in manufacturing, still making uh, increasingly higher income because the laborers become more productive. Therefore, they are compensated uh, by more, by higher income. And this is a, a slide that makes a comparison between manufacturing and the service sector in terms of uh, productivity. And uh, in general, manufacturing 
uh, sector has a higher labor productivity than service sector because in service sector, it's a, a lot of times it's not very easy to increase labor productivity. A uh, a car, a truck always needs to be driven by one worker. You one worker cannot, one driver cannot drive two cars or three cars. That's that's impossible. And that's uh, so. There's a there's a, also one person give haircut only at one one time only get give haircut to one person. Uh, one uh, person uh, one hairdressers cannot. Uh, uh, give haircut, uh, give the 10 people as simultaneously. So there's a limit to increase the labor productivity in service sector sometimes. Of course, uh, lately, because of the development of the internet, uh, people seem to have found more way to increase the labor productivity in service sector, such as, uh, you know, teleconference, people can teach classes online, People can see a doctor online. That's really something help uh, increase kind of drive uh, the labor productivity in service sector. So the long term impact is going to be significant. Also, also going to cause fundamental change in service sector as well. And this slide show uh, in recent uh, decades, people talk about. Uh, the, uh, the re-industrialization uh, of the United States. And the part of the reason is reduce the cost of labor. And this is a slide that shows that uh, between 2000 and uh, 2007, the labor cost in the United States reduced by 2.3%. That is something that make American uh, industries more competitive. And at the same time, you can see that some other developed country, their labor costs are increasing, that makes their industry less competitive. So that is something that will help drive uh, the reindustrialization uh, in the United States. Uh, this is a kind of a, uh, we're going to show a couple of the slides that are kind of interesting, done by a uh, consulting company. Uh, this is a uh, slide that I compare. Uh, Cost, competitive, uh, cost competitive, competitiveness of uh, uh, manufacturing for different uh, countries. It used U.S. as uh, as the benchmark for comparison. This is a uh, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, cost or uh, cost competitive index for the U.S. It uh, it is set at one hundred. So if a country's uh, 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 manufacturing cost competitiveness index is lower than the U.S. That means that uh, their manufacturing is more competitive in terms of cost. They have a lower cost, they were more competitive. But if uh, a country's uh, uh, cost com competitive index is higher than the U.S., it means more expensive and less attractive uh, than the U.S. So this is a slide that shows the uh, manufacturing cost competit competitiveness index for 2004. Uh, you have this uh, uh, total cost, you can break down into uh, the cars that come from labor, come from the electricity, uh, come from natural gas, also from, come from other sources. Uh, this is for uh, 19 uh, to 2004. Look at the China. China has much lower uh, cars compared with the U.S. in 2004. Now let's see what happened 2014, 10 years later. So this is the 2014. Again, uh, the U.S. is used as a benchmark uh, set at 100 uh, to, to compare with other countries. Now look at the China. The China the cost is still lower than the U.S., but is much higher than uh, what it was uh, in 2004. And uh, let's see what makes China's uh, manufacturing cost become higher. Let's go back to uh, 2004. 2004, this is 2004. So when you look at the 2000. Uh, 2014, obviously, the cost of labor become become higher. Also, the cost of natural gas and uh, electricity. So, energy and labor costs in China all become higher in 2014 uh, compared with 2004. And that is what uh, makes American, in terms of a uh, uh, cost of uh, manufacturing, 
relatively speaking, become more competitive uh, compared with China in 2014 than in 2004. So that's something that uh, helped drive the uh, renationalization of manufacturing of internet in, in the U.S. So part of the, uh, one of the strong reasons is uh, is this uh, U.S. energy become independent with this new uh, technology to produce uh, natural gas and crude oil that really give a big uh, big advantage to the U.S. industry. And now we could have direct access to cheaper energy within the United States. That helps cut down the cost of import of energy from other parts, uh, other regions of the world. So this is a uh, uh, same concept in comedy when they come to summarize those uh, major manufacturing countries. They put the U.S. and Mexico as rising star level because increasing competitiveness in manufacturing. So that really gave uh, some kind of hope for the future of the uh, uh, U.S. manufacturing. And this is this discussion, just to discuss some, uh, give some kind of a, uh, a sample of uh, uh, what is it mean by uh, re